She planned to enter medical school, but word came out to try out for the WNBA. She was hired as the first female coach in Dallas Mavericks history. And then 12 days later, she gave birth to her daughter. She is a true trailblazer and a superwoman in my mind. We're going to co show a quick video about Coach Jenny Busek. Welcome, Coach Jenny. I am just thrilled to have you on the show today. It's so good to be here with you, Pam. I, I don't. I know I mentioned to you before, but I am a huge Dallas Mavericks fan. I'm a basketball mom. Both of our boys played basketball. I even played basketball, but nothing compared to your fabulous career. And I would just love to hear you know, really how you got started and, you know, where you grew up and a little bit about yourself. Well, I grew up in Nashville, Tennessee, um, and I come from a family of long lineage of doctors on both sides, um, both my mom's side of the family, my dad's side of the family, many generations, and uh, was raised just to try to find your purpose and your way in life to take the gifts and talents and experiences and pains that you've been through and how can you give that back to the world to make the world a better place? And so med school was my original plan. Um, in fact, my parents were considering not even letting me play a sport in college because they didn't want it to take away from my academics. Um, but once they, they realized that, that I could do both, I could be pre-med, I could play basketball, I could go to a good school. You know, they, they relented on that. I ended up going to the University of Virginia and uh, planning on studying uh, there and, and then going on to med school. But the year that I graduated from college was the year that the WNBA began. So things uh, kind of took a di different turn. Wow, that's great. So, I, you know, I know, I've had a friend before, you know, wanting to go into med school and then ended up doing something different with her career. Um, do you have any, I don't want to use the word regrets, but your career now is so different. Do you have any, you know, what would have happened if you would have gone that way with your family being in the medical field or? Oh, you know, I, I've thought about it a little bit. I think I would have enjoyed that career too because I, you know, I do really enjoy helping people. Um, and, you know, as I've been in transitional times within this career path, as this crazy career path of professional coaching, you know, I've, I've considered like, wow, would I, would I go back to med school now? And I think my dad asked me about every time, even into my 40s. Um, are you going to go to med school now? So it's, it's never really completely left my conscience, but I think my, my parents realize now that I'm doing what I do for the same reasons that they've done what they do. And that is to try to help people, uh, become the healthiest, best version of themselves. And I'm just doing it through the platform of, of sports. And I think it's great. I love watching the Dallas Mavericks games and seeing you, you know, with all of those basketball players I mean how does it feel to go from I know you played college in our basketball in college and then you actually played for the WNBA you were with the Cleveland Rockers what you had an open tryout of 350 women and you were only one of two women picked for that I mean your career to me is just is just fascinating and I just you know love you know reading about it well, you know, I had a fifth year in my major. I had a double major. And so in my mind, my basketball career was over, which it was for all women, you know, at the end of college at that time. Um, and then, you know, 1997, I'm dating myself here, but the NBA announced that they were going to start a women's league. And it was like I hadn't touched the ball in eight months. I really grieved the loss of that part of me and my identity and uh, had gotten my head around moving on which was a painful process. But when this thing actually started to, to become a reality, I felt like I wouldn't be able to live it down if I, I didn't at least try to make a team. Um, and so I went and tried out. It was crazy cat call. And, you know, was, I think it was like 400 people and every cut, they cut it in half. So it went from 400 to 200 to 100 to 50 to 25. 
and you were competing for one, you know, one spot at your position. And uh, so it was nuts. I didn't expect to make the team, but I was blessed to make the team. And it changed um, the course of my, my life or my plan life for sure, because being a part of that inaugural season of the WNBA was so moving and powerful. You know, I can remember going into arenas and there was eight teams, all owned and run by NBA teams. We walk into these massive NBA arenas, they were packed. And I would look up into the stands and I would see grown women uh, with tears in their eyes, just like you could just see the pain, uh, the prejudices, the lack of opportunities because of their gender, the experiences that, that they had had throughout their lifetime that this league, this league was representing change, opportunity, um, maybe fruit from all their fighting and, and uh, things that they'd been through and stood up for. And so it was moving, you know, and then to see the young girls in the stands looking up perplexed and almost confused to see women doing something they'd only see men do their whole lives. And then, you know, them starting to question like, wow, maybe there's other things that that I could do that I only thought boys could do. And I never thought I could do because I'm a girl. And I remember feeling that way as a child. Um, and then to see the young boys in the stands with our jerseys on and their parents talking to us about them being in the backyard, pretending like they're Cheryl Swoops and Cynthia Cooper and Lisa Leslie and thinking these, now there's going to be a, a generation of young men that are going to grow up with a different respect, a different paradigm for women. And that's going to matter. It's going to make them better husbands, better fathers, better co-workers. And, uh, and it just felt like this league mattered. And so when I got hurt uh, that inaugural season, you know, I contemplated going back to med school, but I was so gripped and captured by the purpose and potential of this league that I wanted to do anything that I possibly could to help this league get off the ground, be successful and reach its, its potential and its purposes, because I felt like it could impact not just our society, but but the world at large in terms of gender opportunities. Wow, I love that. That's why I do this show, you know, really to inspire people and, you know, to inspire the younger generation coming up that in the year 2021, that you can become a female coach now for the NBA. And wanted to also ask you who, were some of your mentors, you know, growing up or who did you really look out, look up to? Well, I was fortunate to have a lot of mentors in my family. You know, I had a lot of strong women in my family that were very bright. Um, but I think it's sometimes we focus on the female role models. Um, and I have to say that it was, the, it was also the men in my family that were so comfortable um, with strong women, with smart women that had a big impact too. You know, my grandfather, you know, this was many generations ago, he'd be a hundred something years old by now. You know, he was a very successful world renowned doctor and researcher, psychiatrist, neurologist. And he married a strong woman with, with a high degree that in that, that time just wasn't happening. But to see men accepting that, promoting that, celebrating that, encouraging that, and then seeing the women actually walking in that was powerful. And then to grow up in the state of Tennessee where um, Coach Pat Head Summit was changing um, things there. She was one of the first females, especially in sport, that went mainstream, that had the respect of, of men, of all socioeconomic statuses, um, races, and, uh, you know, they respected her. And she was such an example of, you know, she was the, the coach of the University of Tennessee, such an example of, of grace and power and class all wrapped up into one. And that was such a great role model for me because she was excellent. She was strong. She was powerful, but she was kind and she was female. Yeah, that, that's great. Watching, I know watching a lot of those coaches and some of our Texas teams here, watching some of those women play, there's some great role models compared to when I used to play basketball. I wanted to ask you, what what is it really like coaching. I know I'm in a men's industry, commercial real estate and all men, and you're definitely in an industry. What's it really, you know, really like, you know, I, I always feel I have to get credibility. What's it like coaching all those men, basketball players, 
I mean, when you first got started, what, what were some of the challenges and overcoming those? Well, you know, like I mentioned, I think the the fact that the the men that I was were coaching, that I was coaching um, in the NBA were Title IX babies. They were they grew up. WNBA was a part of their entire existence. You know, female athletes were their sisters and their f- best friends all growing up. The players, most of them, a lot of them were raised by strong women, um, especially in the African American community. You know, they may or may not have had a man in the home, but they had a strong mother or grandmother. The players were extremely shockingly comfortable with a woman in a leadership position. Um, seamless. You know, they had great respect, very much awareness about the WNBA, uh, great respect and no issues. You know, so I, I, I have to say that I was pleasantly surprised that they didn't see gender. They saw, are you somebody that can help me be a better basketball player? Do you know what you're talking about? Can you relate to to me and my life um, and my job and my challenges? And uh, if you're here to help me and you have some some things in your toolkit to help me, I'm all ears. That that was that's been my experience from day one. Right. That yeah, no, you know, Coach Carlisle, I know he he wouldn't hire you and Mark Cuban unless you're the best. So Wanted to, I wanted to let you know I had the opportunity to meet my favorite player, Luca, and we have a picture of him. It's, it was funny. He had just been drafted by the Dallas Mavericks, and we were on a flight from Dallas to Frankfurt. And I noticed him because they just had the draft and because he's from Slovenia and we were flying to Croatia. But he's... He is just such an amazing basketball player, and I'm so glad he came to the Dallas Mavericks. But that was a picture I had to stop him. And I know when I when I landed, I had to send the picture to my boys and show them, look who I just got a picture with. And they're like, Mom, how did you even know who he was? And I'm like, you know, I'm a huge basketball fan, and they just had the draft. But I, I just think he's great for the Mavericks. Absolutely. I mean, we... You know, I, I don't know if a lot of people in the States just knew how special he was, uh, you know, but in the women's game, we, we play our WNBA season in the summer. And so we all go play in Europe in the winter. And so we make a lot of friends in the European basketball world uh, in the women's side. And I know that all my friends overseas, all my European basketball friends, they've been following Luca since he was a young mm. star, you know, a young teenager. And, uh, and so they were very excited and educated me on just how special he is. And I think now we all are, are getting to witness that. So we're very, very, very blessed to have him here and hopefully here for a very long time. I know. I hope he's here as long as Dirk was. Just if you have time for a couple more questions, I, what's on your bucket list? Oh, geez. I'm <laughs> such an in-the-moment person. <laughs> my bucket list has definitely shifted from, you know, me to my daughter. Uh, as you mentioned, I have a two and a half year old daughter and I've lived a great life. I've traveled the world. Um, you know, I've lived a lot of great adventures. I've barely survived some of them. And uh, I've, I've had the means and the, the relationships um, to do a lot of things and live a crazy, crazy fun life. And now a lot of my bucket list is, is about, you know, the adventure of her life and getting to share the exploration of the world with her and through her eyes. And uh, so I, I just want for her everything that I've had and more in terms of being able to meet great people and learn from great people all over the world and travel and, and get to live whatever dreams she has and whatever she feels like is inside of her and, and whatever she's been, uh, what's been installed in her and as her way of giving back and blessing the world around her. That's great. I think what a great role model she has with you. And I saw that picture. I think it was on Twitter of the she um, with the bat, the little basketball uh, hoop in the background. So it'll be interesting if she likes basketball as much as you. I'm sure she will. And it'll be interesting to find her career. I I predict maybe that you'll end up being the head coach of an NBA team. What about that? Would that ever be a goal? It's not a goal. Okay. Um, it was never a goal of mine to, to coach. It was never a goal of mine to be a head coach in the WNBA. It was, so, you know, I'm not really, this is a whole nother conversation. I'm not a believer in goals, to be honest. I think we, we are to be led. Um, 
and really bloom where we're planted. And so I have absolutely no goals or aspirations of climbing the ladder or anything like that. I just want to help the Mavericks with what I'm doing right now. Um, you know, and also trying to balance, like, how can I be a great coach and have a role here that I can be good at and valuable and add something, uh, but also be a great mother. And so if it ever gets to the point where any role that I'm asked to do is compromising my ability to be a great mother also, um, that will be an easy no for me. That's great. Being a, a mom myself and knowing that, you know, my two boys were always the priority too. And that's why I started my own company 15 years ago, because they were such a priority and left corporate America just to spend valuable time with them. Just one last question. What advice do you give females that love the game of basketball or any sport, you know, that would want to be in the same position you are today? What would you recommend for them, you know, to be able to do, to be able to come a coach? Yeah, I think it's it's really the first thing is just having great self-awareness. I think there are a lot of people who um, get into the wrong jobs or go down the wrong paths for the wrong reasons, and it's understandable. Um, but having a great awareness and constantly reevaluating who you are, uh, what are your gifts, your strengths, what energizes you, what are your passions, what are some of the things that have that have hurt you that you would like to be a difference maker, an agent of change with. Um, all of these, all of the things that hopefully with good counsel, with good self-reflection, self-awareness, you can, you can learn what your specific purposes are supposed to be. What are your passions and your purposes? Um, and first and foremost, know what that is. It may not be the most glorious thing. It may not be coaching in the NBA. It may not be X, Y, or Z. I mean, maybe you, you believe it's to be a coach, but maybe you, if you're being honest, you find that it's, that you're. Um, most connecting with kids and coaching kids. It's no less glamorous or less important than coaching on the NBA level. Um, being a head coach is no more important than being an assistant coach. And I, some, I think sometimes in our society, we get caught up in trying to do things for the wrong reasons and we end up out of position, so to speak. So that, that would be my biggest advice is where are you being led? Who are you actually made to be? Uh, what is energizing you? and keeping you up at night in a good way um, and really to find those passions and purposes within you and regardless of what anybody else thinks about them, maybe it's not even been done. Maybe it's never been done by a female. Um, listen to who you've been made to be and what you feel called and the people group that you feel assigned and called to help. I, I love that. I'm all about finding finding your calling and spending quiet time and really listening to yourself. Well, I've thoroughly enjoyed getting to know you a lot better. I can't wait to, you know, come back to a Dallas Mavericks game. I think, I know you just opened it up recently to essential, essential workers. Is it open now for the, you know, to be able, a certain amount of people to be able to attend the Mavs games? Yeah, they're, so they're feeling that out and kind of progressing it slowly. Um, we, we did have for the first time this week, some of our season ticket holders. And so they started with essential care workers as a way to bless them, thank them, reward them, a limited number. And then I think they opened it up to a limited number of our season ticket holders. So we're progressing as fast, but as safely as we can, because we sure miss our fans. I know, I, I miss attending the games. I just had my second vaccine shot on Wednesday, so. I'm ready to get back to traveling and attending events and especially coming to the Mavs game. But Coach Jenny, thank you so much for being on the show. You are truly an inspiration to all women, all men. And I, I love that you're living your passion. And I really appreciate you taking the time today. Oh, it's a pleasure. And thank you for all that you have done and you are doing, you know, and we hope that we can continue to pass the torch down to the young women behind us. I know we have to keep doing that and encouraging them and giving them the confidence. And it's, you know, being, I don't want to say strong women, but, you know, just women out there showing what's out there. Thank you so much, Jenny. Thank you for having me.